Hello and welcome to another IC3D Quick Bite. In today's Quick Bite, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about this little camera option here at the top and how you can add depth of field to your render. The first thing I want to do is set up my render by heading over to my model library as I've got two renders here for two models that I'm going to quickly import. It's going to be this French dip and the original ridges. I figured we needed something to dip into, uh, into our French dip. From here, once we've got both models into our scene, we're going to want to go ahead and ground both of these, just so when we add shadows, we don't have any uh, floating objects. To do this very quickly, we just simply grab our bag, hit the ground, and then grab our French onion, and hit the ground as well. As you can see, that is all inside of the transform tool. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the ridges and just scoot these back, and a little to the left here. Now I'm also going to, then going to use my rotate tool to just position them towards the camera ever so slightly. Zooming out again and then hitting F to view everything, we're now going to be able to uh, set up for our render. So let's go ahead and first add our shadows. Since both of our objects are sitting on the same floor, that shouldn't be a problem at all. And then we can go ahead and add our white background. Now from here, we're going to go up to view, and we're going to swap our render views to our high quality ray tracing view. Now, since again, we're just using this as a quick, uh, just a base reference of how things are going, I'm going to use the fastest quality, as that's going to render it out the quickest. I'm going to hit start, and let's take a look at our render. The initial rendering will always take slightly longer, but after that initial rendering, everything should go a bit quicker. From here, one thing I am noticing uh, right off the bat is I want to go ahead and change this glass material so it's not as dark. So I know a quick fix for this is to open up my clear material here, increase the refraction just slightly, and then actually change this over to a paper. Since I'm using a paper, I really wanted to illustrate that, uh, that texture that's being used inside of our French onion dip, and I think that illustrates that quite nicely. From here, now let's go over to our camera options and play around with that depth of field option I was telling you guys about. So if we open up our camera settings from pitch to yaw to zooming, FOV, panning, and again panning Y. Any of these can be changed, and any of these can be saved as a preset, meaning you can get all your GS1 presets in here or any of those custom presets that you might need. Now from here, though, we can open up into our pinhole or depth of field option. So if we go down into these options here, by default, the pinhole should be selected. This is just the normal render view, and that's just traditionally how cameras are working. So we're going to want to try move that over to the depth of field view. And at first it's going to blur everything out because we don't have something that's in focal length. Meaning if I were to go ahead and then select our French onion dip and hit this focal length, this will adjust that length so that it is now the center of our object. Now, of course, since our object isn't exactly the, uh, the center isn't where we want it to shine, we may need to adjust this focal length ever so slightly in order to then get the actual French onion itself there in the front to come out nice and clear. And that's quite easy by just using our focal length adjustment. Now, once you've got what you need in view and everything else is nice and uh, blurred back, we can go ahead and send this off for a final render or whatever you need to do with this nice little feature. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, quick IC3D quick bite, just detailing over the camera settings option and showing you guys how to unlock and use the depth of field option. My name's Adam Chop, and again, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week, and stay tuned for more videos on our channel, and don't forget to like and subscribe, as it does help our channel out tremendously, and it gets these videos to users who, uh, the, uh, you know, the IC3D users who need to see these and uh, get these helpful tutorials. Thank you so much.